pull my sleeves now. Pisano or Paisano? Paisano. Paisano? Yeah. Long hat? Okay, raise your right hand for me, please, both of you. Do each of you swear that the testimony given to me is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth after that? Yes. We see. We see you right there. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is the matter of Ricardo Paisano III, cause number 45, DO 60511, JD 1948. Let the record show that Attorney Guzik is present representing the state of Indiana. Mr. Elkins is present probation officer. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Leterzo. Good afternoon, You represent Mr. Paisano? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Will you state your name, young man? My name is Ricardo Paisano III. And how old are you, Ricardo? 18 years old. All right. Your name, ma'am? And how are you related to Ricardo? I'm um, his aunt and legal guardian. His aunt and legal guardian. Okay. Uh, we're here today on a petition to modify um, Mr. Paisano's probation that was filed uh, back on June 10th of 2008. Have you seen a copy of that, Mr. Laterzo? <coughs> yes, Your Honor. And at this time, would you waive the reading of the allegations contained in that petition? Yes, Your Honor. And do you admit or deny um, the allegations that uh, Mr. Paisano was placed on probation April 4th of 2006, that he was ordered placed at um, Silver State Academy in Yarrington, Nevada on February 7th, 2007, and that he failed to return there on, Mar on May 26, 2008 after being home for a home pass? He, Ricardo admits those okay. allegations. Would you like to um, elicit from him what happened? and why does he fail to return? Okay. Uh, Would you like him to sit up here so you can ask him questions and would they would, be more comfortable? Would you be comfortable sitting up there or would you be more comfortable sitting here? It doesn't matter, whatever. Whatever the court would prefer, Your Honor. I, I think I would prefer to have him sit here and be judge. Ricardo, why don't you? And that way Mrs. Guzzi well, can a ask him questions as well. Okay, Mr. Leterzo, go ahead. <clears throat> Ricardo, uh, you were placed uh, as part of your uh, sentence and probation in this case in the uh, Rite of Passage program in Yarrington, Nevada, uh, back in February of 2007. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And, and you participated in that program um, up until um, May 26 of 2008. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, in fact, while you were there, um, you uh, advanced and uh, were set to, to graduate uh, in June of 2008. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, back in May 2008, uh, were you given a home pass to come back from Nevada to visit your family here in Crown Point, Indiana? Yes. Okay. And um, you were scheduled to return to Nevada to complete the Rite of Passage program uh, on May 26, 2008. Is that yes. true? Yes. And um, you did not return. Is that true? Yes. You essentially ran away from your grandmother's house and went yes. on the run for a while. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> you knew you were supposed to go back to Nevada to finish your program out there. Yes. Right? Okay, so you, you know you violated the court's order by not returning. Yes. I understand that. Yes. Okay. And um, I, I think probably what the judge is interested in hearing from you is why didn't you go back? What was it that made you make the poor choice uh, to not return? Um. The reason I didn't go back is because I was already there for um, 
I was I was already there for 16 months. It's only like a seven or eight month program. It was my fault. It was my fault that I was there for 16 months. Um, I was messing up when I first got there. I did complete every aspect of the program, uh, sports, vocation, school. I completed everything. Only thing I didn't complete was get my RAM. That's the last level. And when I did get my RAM, I asked when I was going to get released. I was told September 1st, and I just felt like that's. September 1st, I was another four months away, and I was just like, I've already been here double the time of what you're supposed to be here, so that's why I ran, Your Honor. And um, you ultimately were picked up uh, in East Chicago on this court's warrant, is that true? Um, no, I was, I was at um, St. Margaret's Hospital in Hammond off of State Line Road. You were picked up in, ha in the city of Hammond? I, yeah, I was at the hospital. Okay. Uh, Before I, you came here right now? Yes. Okay. And um, you've been here in the juvenile center for the last month? 32 days, yes, sir. That's all I have. This is Guzik. Do you have any questions? At any point after you failed to return to placement, did you contact the probation officer? Yeah, I think I, I contacted him in December or January, the beginning of January. Called you. I, I asked him, um, uh, um, on like how I could get, get this warrant cleared up because I was just, I was, I was wondering. I, I was still, I was out. So. What did he tell you to do? Um, he told me that my uh, attorney was already um, handling the process to take care of it. And did you contact her? Yes. You never surrendered yourself up to the court, is that correct? No. You waited to be picked up? Uh, mm, my situation, well, I'm on, uh, I'm on parole in the state of Illinois, so that's why. What does being on parole with the state of Illinois have to do with you surrendering yourself? in Lake County on your warrant? Because I wasn't in Lake County. The only reason I was in Lake County is be the reason I didn't surrender myself is because I was trying to get it cleared up. I was on parole in the state of Illinois. I got sentenced to a year of parole. A after running from ROP, I, I caught a, a charge in, in Illinois. I was sent to Illinois Department of Corrections. I was sentenced to a year. Uh, they let me out on parole November 13th of 08 and I was out in Illinois. I was to remain in District 1 of Illinois, Cook County. And did you tell your parole officer in the state of Illinois you had warrants out in Indiana? Yes, I did. What did he say about that? Um, she said that, uh, that just to have your lawyer try to figure out how to clear it up. She said that um, we can't really do nothing about it because it was a misdemeanor warrant. And, and they, they brought it up before they released me from um, the uh, penitentiary that they said that it's a misdemeanor warrant. We can't hold you for it. So. I have no further questions, Judge. I have a couple questions, if you don't mind, Mr. Viterzo. Please. Um, you said that, um, well, a couple things. One was that you were in placement, and you said the program was going to be, what, eight year, eight months? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, sure. And you ended up staying, what, 16 months? S 16 when I ran, yes. So why is it that the program turned out to be double for you? Because I, I, I wasn't working my program, Your Honor. I had an anger issue, and I just I couldn't control my anger. I couldn't control the things that I was doing. I was just snapping off. Um, sometimes I wasn't taking my medication, and it just it, it caused a real problem for me. You were ready to graduate. You were going to graduate in June, were you not? Yeah. Of 2008? You're, you're correct. Yeah. And so you went home in May. Yep. And it was, what, just a couple weeks before you were scheduled to graduate from high school, right? No, not high school, no. Graduate from the, from from the, the program. program? Yeah, yes. And so you were just a couple weeks away. In May, when you left, did you know that you weren't going to get out of there till September? That's what I was told, Your Honor. Before you went home on the home pass? Yes, Your Honor, mm -hmm. in a video conference. So you were already at home when you found that out? No, I was in Nevada when I found that out in a video conference with my uh, PO and a counselor. I see. And so you made the decision then that you weren't going to go back because you wanted to get out sooner? Yes, Your Honor. 
But you accomplished some, some things while you were at Silver State, did you not? Yes, you're right. What did you accomplish there? Uh, accomplished welding. I could, um, I could, I completed every, every, every level of welding. I mean, oxy fuel gas welding, um, um, gas metal arc welding, stick metal arc welding, tungsten, all of it. Mm -hmm. I was the highest in my welding class because I was there for 16 months. I was there more than any of the other kids. Working, uh, building bunk beds, um, and when I was just recently out, when I got let out on parole, I uh, filled out an application for the Iron Workers Union. Um, while while I just got incarcerated, they faxed to my grandmother's house saying that they want to interview me for the Iron Workers Union. So you learned something while you were in placement. Yes, I did. Yeah, and and currently, while I was out from November 13th to the time I just got incarcerated, I've been taking GED classes. Um, I I've Anger management counseling in uh, Illinois, it's mandatory that I take it. I was started. Pursuant to your uh, parole? Yeah, nine, it's a nine week class every Saturday, 10 to 11. And where do you take that? Uh, Dalton, Illinois. You said that while you were out after you didn't go back in May of 2008, to quote you, you caught a charge yes, in I Illinois. Caught, yes, I did. What, what does that mean, you caught a charge? Um, I, I committed another crime. Okay. And what was that crime? Uh, unlawful use of a weapon. And what kind of weapon? It, it was a handgun. And what happened after you were arrested? Um, I was in Cook County Jail and they, uh, I was in Cook County Jail and I was sitting there. I was in there for about three months and the judge finally said, because that, the juvenile put a hold on me while I was in Cook County Jail. So the judge said, well, you already violated probation, so I'm just gonna sentence you to a year in Illinois Department of Corrections. I was sent to Illinois Department of Corrections. I had to do 61 days mandatory, and then they let me out on parole. And I'm on parole right now. I'm on parole until November 13th of this year. So you were charged uh, as an adult? As an adult, Because yes. in Illinois, at age 17, you're considered an adult, is that right? Yes, yes ma'am. And so you were there and you were three months in the Cook County Jail. Yes ma'am. How did that work for you? It wasn't, it wasn't nice. I woke up. Welcome to adulthood, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything from that experience? Yes, I did. What I'm, did you learn? I don't ever want to go back to prison again. So what are you going to do to make sure that doesn't happen? Uh, hopefully when I, if I do get released, Today, um, I was supposed to take my GED on the 18th of this month, the 18th and 19th of this month. Well, I'll just have to wait till next month to take it. And uh, in March, take my GED, um, go do the interview with the Iron Workers Union. If I get the job in the Iron Workers Union, save up my money and do what I have to do to do what every other person does, works every day, start a family. And Who do you live with now when you're not in the county jail in Cook County or? Here in this detention center? I live with um, James Harper in uh, Sauk Village, Illinois. And is it a friend or a relative? It's a relative. And how is he related to you? Um, my, his, his granddaughter is my cousin. His granddaughter married, his granddaughter married one of the Paisanos. Okay. So, so he's and, a cousin through marriage? Yeah. How long have you been living with him? Uh, since November 13th of 08. When you got out on parole? Yes. Because you have to live in the state of Illinois, is that why? Yes. Otherwise you would what, be living with your grandmother in Crown Point? Yes, and, and I was trying to get a transfer. That's why I was trying to get this warrant took care of while I was on parole, because mm -hmm. I was trying to get transferred to the state of Indiana, get my parole transferred. Is so that a possibility? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right, based on what I've asked, um, any questions, Mr. Viterzo? No questions for him, Judge. Mrs. Kuzik, anything else? No, Judge. All right. Thank you. You may have a seat next to your attorney. Mr. Laterzo, do you have any other witnesses that you'd like to call today? No, I just read a little bit of comments. Okay. You've read the report uh, submitted by the probation officer? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Before you uh, make your argument, uh, Mr. Elkins, um, I've read your report, um, and I see what your recommendation is, which is for, yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. That um, the report, the recommendation is that uh, he be committed to the Lake County Juvenile Center uh, for 34 days, which is what you say he's been here for 34 days, and then he be given credit for time he served 
um, and that he be released today and uh, release him from probation and dismiss his wardship. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Would you like to tell the court why it is you've made that recommendation? Well, I believe juvenile court has given this young man multitude of services. Um, we placed him in uh, not only Silver State Academy in Nevada, before that we had placed him at Kokomo Academy. Um, there's really nothing else I believe that juvenile court can do with this young man. He's, he's been in the adult system in Illinois. Um, Simply, I think it's time for him to be an adult. Um, he did get things out of Silver State Academy, uh, the welding program. It's a really good program at that facility. Uh, when they leave completely from that program, they leave with a professional certification in welding. Um, so I'm quite sure he's, as he stated, he's proficient in, in all the welding aspects. Um, he does still need to get his GED, which his family, I'm sure, will be able to provide him um, to, to help to get his GED. Um, so at this time, we just feel like there's nothing else that juvenile court can provide for him, and uh, it's time for him just to move on with his life. Um, Mrs. Guzik, I'll let you speak before Mr. Laterzo. Are you um, in agreement with the recommendation here made by the probation officer? Reluctantly, Judge. It, it really bothers me that this young man is sitting here today. He's had numerous services offered to him by this court. Some of them he's been receptive to and others not so much. But he's leaving here today. He's 18. He has no education. He has an adult record in another state. He has a serious juvenile record that can be used uh, for sentence enhancement against him in Indiana. And unless he gets his life together very quickly, uh, I, I, I know after being a prosecutor for 25 years that he's headed for a very bleak future. And it just bothers me to see somebody at 18 walking out of this court that's provided him so many opportunities to change what he's decided to do in his life and how he's decided to comport himself and he hasn't availed himself to the opportunities. But because there are no further services that the juvenile court can provide him uh, at this time, I am in agreement with probation's recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Luterzo? Um, I'm in agreement with uh, probation's recommendation. Um, Mr. Paisano uh, does fortunately have excellent support here in this community. Uh, through his grandmother, who unfortunately, uh, uh, due to uh, her practice, could not be here today, <clears throat> but she's generally always here. Um, his the co-guardian aunt uh, is here today, and uh, they have both uh, been here for everything. Uh, through all he's been through, they've been there for him. Um, and yes, it has been a dif difficult road for uh, Rick. Um, strange sitting, I got in this case three years ago, maybe four, um, and it's uh, strange sitting next to him right now because he's taller than I am, and uh, <laughs> when the case started out, he's taller and bigger than I am, and when the case started out, he was, uh, uh, yeah, I, he, I, I dwarfed him, so uh, he's grown up quite a bit. Um, I think he, he, he he did not walk away from these programs without getting anything out of them. He, he did. The one thing that's kind of not so clear in the reports is that he, and he mentioned it while he was on the witness stand, he needs to take his medication. There are some biochemical issues that, are, uh, that contribute to uh, the problems uh, that he has and uh, it leads him to make some of the impulsive decisions that he makes. Um, and. I, I think he realizes now uh, that he has to stick uh, to his, uh, his medication and I, I know he's made it clear to us in talking to his grandmother that um, you know in the past he, he was reluctant and, and resisted taking them but I think now he realizes that if he wants to function uh, normally and, and do what he says he wants to do that he's going to have to stick to that regimen. Um, so I think he's sincere. And, in wanting to uh, turn himself around, and, and I also would, um, I also think that the stay in the Cook County Jail and the Illinois DOC was an eye-opening experience because when this, as this case was progressing, I kept telling him, Rick, you're, if you keep going the way you're going, I'm going to see you across the street 
over in the uh, criminal division, and it's, it's a totally different, you know, what's going to happen to you there is going to be totally different, and I don't think he got it, and uh, I think he gets it now, now that he's had a taste of uh, Cook County. Um, I'm sure that really opened his eyes up. So <laughs> I think uh, while it hasn't been the, the greatest success in terms of uh, the services that were provided, I think he did get something out of it, and I think uh, since he has good support of this community, uh, I, I believe that um, there's a good chance that he will not reoffend, and hopefully he'll be a productive adult and not find himself, as I say, across the street. Um, thank you. I think that um, listening to you this, this afternoon, Mr. Laterzo, it, and listening to um, your description of him sitting next to you and him being bigger than you really um, strikes a chord with me in that it's, it's really sad. I think that, you know, here's a young man um, who has sort of grown up in our system. And uh, for those of us that have been doing it as long as Mrs. Guzik and I have, about 27 years, uh, that's not a good thing. And it never makes you feel good about it. And, um, but I know one thing, even though he's grown up in this system and by some um, people's opinions, it might be that he has failed in, in, because the program, he left the program before he was supposed to. Um, that isn't going to make me give up on, on children. Uh, and that's up until a few weeks ago was what he was, was a child. And um, just because you reach that magical age does not make you an adult. It's, it's what you do after that with your life that makes you a grown up and a man and an adult. Um, but I would have rather him learn his welding in high school, <laughs> which most people do or in trade school instead of placement. Uh, unfortunately for Ricardo, he learned his in placement, um, and hopefully he learned other things in placement. But again, I will never give up on kids that come before this court uh, and us trying to save them from what's out there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, bumps in the road of life, and um, hopefully you'll get over those bumps because we're not going to be here to hold your hand anymore. Uh, there's, if you end up in the adult system and you've already been there, there's anybody in this room that knows better about the Cook County Jail than you, and they say it's one of the worst in the country to be in because of uh, the numbers of people they have there. Uh, but you're going to have to do that by yourself. In the adult system, no one's going to ask you, gee, do you want to go to placement, or have you taken your medicine today? Uh, that's going to be something that's going to be on you, and um, I hope that uh, you've learned something <clears throat> during your four or five years here in the juvenile court system. And I'm a firm believer that people who make it are people that have a family support system behind them. And if it's true what Mr. Laterzo says, it sounds like you have a leg up on most people that come through here uh, and that your family will be there for you. And I hope you take advantage of that and that you're good to them because they'll only be good to you as long as you are good to them. After a while, people um, sort of give up on folks that keep uh, biting the hand that feeds them. Um, so good luck to you, Mr. Paisano. I hope that you get your life turned around. Um, and this will be the last time we see you in this court. But today the court is going to commit you to the Lake County Juvenile Center for a period of 34 days. I'm going to give you credit for the time you've served in order that you be released to the custody of um, your cousin. Well, actually, you're an adult, so you can be released, but I'm sure you need a ride home. And so I'll release you to her custody, and uh, I will release you from probation and um, dismiss wardship at this time. And I'll make a finding that reasonable efforts have been made to provide services to this young man. Do you have any questions? No, oh, ma'am. Mr. Laterzo, anything else? No, Your Honor, thank you. Mrs. Guzik? Nothing, Judge. All right, Mr. Alkins, good afternoon. This hearing's adjourned. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. That's what it, 
I tried that once in high school. Metal popping up and said, no, can't do it. Yeah. Well, you gotta wear leathers and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. can Well, they still get you. Look, you can see the burns on my arms. I got little white spots all over my arms. Are you free and clear? Yes. Yeah. You get used to it after a while. Like I was doing it for 16 months straight, manufacturing bunk beds. So, see, I, I first time that happened. It's, I don't know how people do this. <laughs> and then I couldn't see anything with the, the mask in front. Yeah. I couldn't see. No. Yeah. Well, you did. When you start off, it's kind of hard. But okay. You get used to it. So that's the trade you're gonna pursue? Yeah, I'm certified. I'm, all I gotta do is just go to a college and get certified. I'm good. Yeah, that's the trade, yeah. You ever thought of it? Do you swim well? Yeah. yeah. Underwater. Yeah, because that's a good living. That's where the big money is. Yeah, but the life and space is right. over and underwater. Right. right. 17, right. 19 months. Yeah. You know, you get the money invested, then you're not to worry about it. Yeah. I'm just gonna take him straight down. Yeah. Now. All right, thanks. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to take him down now. Peace. Thank you, sir. You just won the lottery, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't want to read about you doing something stupid. Right You're away. not going to. <laughs> Promise you won't. Got a girl. Got a good girl. I'll be fine. Thank you, God. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully nothing stupid on the back there. Oh. Okay. Anyways. Start on life for you, kind of, so to speak. Yeah. Given the way things went today. That's the first time I. The, I that's the first time the court says something good about me. I hope that you take advantage of that and use it in a positive way. Right? Open Delta Breath, please. I ain't never put shackles on again. What's wrong through your head right now? I'm about to be free, even though it's a cruddy day. I'm just, I don't care. <laughs> you have a little pep in your step. Yeah, I'm walking a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. I got a Jeep full of bullet holes and go patch them up. Got a, uh, Get my license. Kneel down. You take the cups off first so I could. Peace, I'm going. Going home. What you think? Last time you ever gonna see me, I'm gonna tell Baltazar. Do you have, do you, or do you, I'll just tell him to call here and ask for you. I gotta go back in the cell. No. Hey, DJ, can I get his clothes, please? Yeah, so. Good, turn around and have a seat until we get some clothes. It's very clear if you want to get some clothes. Yeah, you, you see it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Gone. Yes, sir. Gone. Never. What do you feel like saying right now? I'm so happy you don't even understand. This is, this is four years. 14, 05, November 05, and now I'm here. Uh, February 26th of... Um, February 26th. 
of 09, yeah, and then um, spent four birthdays locked up, 15, 16, 17th, and 18th. Two of them in here and two of them in Nevada in, in a placement. And next year I'm gonna be at the crib on my birthday at a club or something. 18, you say. Yeah. Got a big battle ID that says 18. Tell me, I mean, you think, no, you're out now. You gotta do it though. You gotta, you gotta really have the willpower to stay out of trouble. Yep, I'm it. try to do whatever I, I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to survive. I mean, there's many temptations out there. Like, how are you gonna deal yeah. with that? Oh, I'm not. I'm not a kind of person. That, the only temptation I got is uh, the women. Other than that, I'm not. I don't do drugs. I don't alcohol. I don't. It's. I'm past all that. I don't. I've been out for three months, and I've what, touched alcohol probably twice. I mean, yeah. I'm not, and before you couldn't keep me away. Every day I had to have a bottle, a bottle and a blunt. I don't even think about stuff like that no more. So you gonna make your money the straight way now too? Yeah. Well, for right now, I'm gonna let my girl support me. <laughs> until I get a job, but and then no, oh, that's it. I got a good girl here. She'll she'll do what she has to do to make sure I'm all right. I ain't gonna say I'm have Gucci and Versace on, but I ain't gonna be looking bummy, so I'm fine. What what was going through your mind in the middle of the, I mean, in the middle of the I started. I got so nervous when they put me on the stand. Hey, you said it. I I got nervous. I got so nervous. It, it was wild. Um, the things that was going through my head, uh, I'm just sitting there. As soon as she said, as soon as my lawyer read off the report that my that my uh, probation officer said he recommends I get released, I was like, wow, because me and my probation officer wasn't, we wasn't like like this. We wasn't like that. It was a battle between us for four years. It's been a battle between me and him. So I'm I'm surprised that he read that off. Like my probation officer recommends I get released, and then I seen that lady on MTV, the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And I seen her yelling and slamming people. I'm like, I'm surprised she was like, well, I don't got really nothing to say. I was like, wow. That was, yeah, was that a bit of a relief? Like yeah, that, that was a surprise, because I was watching the MTV show. I'm like, wow, she's really getting at people. Uh, what about your probation officer? What's your, what's your relationship with him? What do you, know, what'd you, what'd you think about what he said? Um, he told the truth, I mean. He he said that they don't have they does they don't have nothing to offer for me. I took what I needed from this system. I took my vocation, learned how to control my anger a little bit more. Because before, when I was in here, you couldn't stop me from fighting, couldn't stop me from kicking on my door, spitting on staff, throwing stuff out my window. You couldn't stop me from doing that. Now this time I didn't get. It. I've had a clean, clean slate. I haven't done nothing wrong this whole time. Well, yeah. Alright. Yeah. So you got stuff in your hands? Yeah. Yeah. Is he getting dressed out right now? Mm-hmm. I'm going to crib. I don't save my life, throw them away. 